All right, we're going to predict some products of chemical equations. So what we're going to be doing for 20 through 30, I'm just going to do the even ones, um, is we are going to turn the words into an actual chemical equation. And so what we're going to do, very first thing, is we're going to turn these words into their appropriate symbols. So we're going to write potassium as simply K because it's an element. It's straight off the periodic table. And then we are going to write the formula for silver chloride. Well, silver is an element that you need to know the um, charge. I've asked you several chapters ago to memorize the charges of silver, zinc, and cadmium. Silver is a plus one, and chlorine is a minus one. So the chemical formula for silver chloride will be AgCl. Um, all right, this is what we've been doing in class so far. We've just been doing the left-hand side. Well. Now what we're going to do is take this and we are going to look at the um, reference table that we have to see what type of chemical reaction this would be. What I see is I see an element and I see a compound. I know that this is an element because I have one capital letter and I know that this is a compound because I see two capital letters, the capital A and the capital C, so that's two symbols together. Well, I look over here at my types of reactions. And the thing that matches up most closely with that, or actually the only thing that matches up with that, is a single replacement reaction, where I have an element and a compound. Now, what we can do is we can look down through here to see if any of our, um, any of our elements or compounds match up with any of this. So, for example, this would be a metal plus water. Well, I don't have a metal plus water. I have a metal plus another compound. This says... Um, metal plus basically some sort of an acid like an H and something else like HCl, um, H2CO3, HNO3. Well, I don't, I don't have an H there. So this matches up with this very first one where the metals switch places and that's what it says is metal, metal replacement. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch places and put the potassium with the chlorine and we're going to put the silver out by itself. But if you have looked back over at our descriptions of um, uh, our types of chemical reactions, you hopefully remember that when we have a single replacement reaction, we have to decide whether or not the two metals will switch places. And how we do that is we use our activity series. Well, potassium is out by itself and silver is down here it's in the compound. Remember that the one that is higher up, the most active or reactive metal, is the one that wants to be in the compound. That means potassium, because we're looking at the two in question for this one, potassium and silver. Potassium is way higher up, so potassium wants to go with the chlorine. That means this reaction will take place, so I'm going to write down KCl plus Ag. And how I know this is based on like a combination of what happens in a single replacement reaction. Um, I know this based on the activity series. How I choose to write this is based on the rules of formula writing. You may need to go back and review how to write chemical formulas in order to come up with the proper numbers. Okay, I'm going to skip on down to 22. Um, we have carbonic acid. Okay, the formula is written from my classes right now because we haven't memorized our acid names. This, this can also be called hydrogen carbonate plus sodium. Well, sodium is just an element, so we just simply write down Na. Well, this is the um, same idea. I see a single element, and then I see a compound. So when we go back to our um, reference table, if this is a single replacement, um, it's not actually going to work like this one this time because I don't have a metal plus water but I do have a metal plus something with hydrogen see the hydrogen right here and then the carbon the carbonate on this side it doesn't matter that the sodium is written on the right um, whereas my example here has the metal over here on the left that that doesn't make any difference these two things can switch places and it means the same thing so what this is going to do, as far as helping me, let's see if I can put them both up there, is it tells me what to do next. So when I do my arrow, according to this, what we're going to do is the metal will now go with whatever it was that's with the H. 
So to make this a little easier, let's see if I can kind of color code. This is what's with the H. So what this is telling me is that sodium needs to go with carbonate. And what it says up here is that hydrogen will come out by itself. So here's what we're expecting to happen. Sodium would go with carbonate. Well, the proper formula for sodium and carbonate together is Na2CO3. And hydrogen would come out by itself. Now, this is the proper formula based on satisfying the octet rule. This gets written as H2 because it's a part of Brinkelhoff. It's one of seven elements that always gets written diatomically when it's elemental, when it's just pure hydrogen. Um, we do need to make sure that these two things would actually switch places since it's a single replacement. So we're looking at sodium, which is up here towards the top. And if you'll notice, you have these lines that come down the activity series. Um, these lines basically tell you, like, if the element falls from up here at the top of this line to right here at the bottom, all of these things, all of these elements will react with oxygen to make an oxide. Well, that doesn't help me right this moment because I don't have an oxide. I have, like, a carbonate. All right. From lithium down to lead right here where, where this area is, all of these elements will replace hydrogen from an acid. Oh, now, well, look, this was called carbonic acid. So what it means is that sodium is in this line of elements. Sodium will replace the hydrogen from the acid. Sodium will be willing to switch out and take its place. So we can leave it written as it is because it will happen. While we're looking at this, everything down to this point is willing to replace hydrogen from steam. In other words, it would react with water to switch places. Um, but as long as it's steam, it'd have to be gaseous water. And everything down to this point would do it if it was colder water, like liquid water. Okay? How this would be written in your, in your problem would be as liquid, and this would be written as H2O as a gas. Okay? So, we're good to go. Like, we can leave it just like that. 24. Iron 2 oxide. Well, iron 2 oxide is FeO. Remember that 2 gives me the charge of the iron? Well, if that's all it says and then there's an arrow, when I look over here at my types of reactions, the one that has one reactant is going to be de decomposition. So how I'm going to split this up depends upon what it is. This is not a metal with a carbonate. It's a metal with oxygen. Um, it's not a metal with hydrogen carbonate. It's not a metal with hydroxide. It's not a metal with a chlorate. It's just, it's a, it's a binary compound. That means it's made up of, of two elements. All this says we're going to do is just split them up. Split them up into element A and element B. So when we split, that's going to split into iron and oxygen. Now, oxygen has to be written as O2 because it's part of Brinkelhoff. It's one that always gets written diatomically. How we know that? We just memorize it. Okay, 26. Sodium, we write as Na because it's just elemental. Oxygen is elemental, but it's part of Brinkelhoff, so it gets written as O2. Now, we have an arrow. What do we do next? Well, I have, I have two single elements right here. And if I look at my list of reaction types, the only thing that has like two single elements by themselves is synthesis. So what this says to do is just put them together, like make them into a compound. So how we make sodium and oxygen into a compound is to make it Na2O. It takes two sodiums to react with the one oxygen and meet the octet rule. Um, 28, sodium fluoride and chlorine. Well, this is NaF plus Cl2. This is NaF because that's what it took one of each to, to meet the octet rule. It's Cl2 because that's part of Brinkelhoff. It gets written diatomically. Now, my next step is deciding which type of reaction that I have so I know what to do with this. Do I combine them together? Do I switch things? Um, well, I see a compound and I see an element. This has um, two different capital letters, this has one capital letter. That's what tells me this is a compound and this is an element. Well, if I, if I memorize this, life becomes easier. When I have an element and a compound, it's a single replacement. 
And as I look at this, um, I don't have I don't have water as a part of it. I don't have a, a hydrogen in front of anything. So I mean, it's it's simply going to be one of these replacements. Now my single element happens to be a non-metal. That means, you know, all it's going to do is match up with this bottom one. It's going to be a halide-halide replacement. Like we have a halogen and a halogen. They want to switch out with each other. Well, remember with single replacements, we have to look at our activity series. And when I look at my activity series at the halogens, um, we have fluorine and chlorine. Fluorine is the most reactive. Chlorine is less. Remember, the most reactive gets to be in the compound. So fluorine is going to take the compound. Well, fluorine's already in the compound, which means chlorine is not going to be able to come in and take its place. So what we're going to write on our papers is no reaction. Like, this doesn't take place. This is our proper answer. Then we have number 30, potassium chloride. Okay, the proper formula for that is KCl. And then we have lead to iodide. That is PbI2. Using their charges or their dot structures, we'll come up with these formulas. All right, what I see this time is I see a compound and a compound. How I know is I see two capital letters in this one and two different capital letters in this one. So I have a compound and a compound. Well, when I look at my types of reactions over here, the only thing that has comp two compounds is a double replacement. Single has one compound, and decomp has one compound, but I have two. The only thing with two is double. This doesn't match up with the combustion because I don't have a hydrocarbon, and the oxygen is elemental, so, I mean, it has to be a double replacement. How I'm going to think of this in my mind is, for me, I just, I switch my metals. My two metals need to do a little, a little swap. So that means the potassium will go with the iodine. When you write its formula properly, that's Ki, and then you will have chlorine um, now going with the lead. And if it was lead to right here, it's still going to be lead to, so it'll be PbCl2. So that way I have properly written formulas all the way across. Now at this point, if you're with me, um, all we've worked on is like how to predict the products. I haven't worked on balancing. None of this is balanced. And I also haven't worked on states of matter. So coming up, I'm going to work on how to determine if each of these is a solid, a liquid, a gas, aqueous. And eventually we'll work on balancing whether it's these or something else. We'll still work on those. So this is just part of writing a completely um, correct chemical equation. So look for the other videos if you would like help with some of those other things.